This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome to AutoCorrect, helping you correct your auto problems. Our host is the lady auto mechanic, Allison Walker, ASE certified. I'm Liz Gill. Hello, Allison. Hi, Liz. Okay, so Allison, let's set up what you were up to last week. On AutoCorrect, we love answering your vehicle repair questions. By that, I mean Allison loves answering them. But we, and I think all of us, love hearing about Allison's racing experience. So between the calls and emails, we're going to hear about what you were doing last week. So where were you last week, Allison? So I went to Lincoln, Nebraska, the uh, first time in that state that I've ever been there, for the national event for autocross that's held by the SCCA, Sports Car Club of America. Um, so that's the biggest autocross event in the world. It's, it's also the biggest motorsports event in the world for the number of participants that come. It's usually around 1,300 people. Uh, this year, due to COVID, it was around uh, 1150, I think, or so entries. But for one sport, motorsport event, it's the uh, biggest in the world, and that's that's pretty awesome. Um, and it did have, it does have like a people from Canada. I'm not sure what other countries were there, but um, so it, it is a global global event. But it's it was uh, it was huge. It was, it was there was a lot of people there. So that is so cool that you went and you got to participate. Now, is this something anybody could sign up and participate for, or did you have to uh, have qualifying time to get in or win something to get to get in? No, you don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to qualify or anything like that. It's just if you feel like you're good enough to run against the best in autocross, then then you go and you sign up. Um, you know, do the registration and everything, just like you would like a normal autocross event. It's it's, it's pretty much the same. Um, the difference this time is that I was asked to co-drive a car, and they said part of the driving the car was signing up for a contingency program where they got points back for how good you did to save money on huger tires. So it was a huger tire contingency. Um, the first car I was going to drive was a Mazda, so that they also had a Mazda contingency too uh, set up. Um, and there's a, there's a few other contingencies out there, but that, that was the ones that I was um, signed up for for this car that I was going to drive. I was asked by Joanna Grease and her husband Clint Grease to co-drive their really awesome street modified. Uh, Mazda Speed 6 that they had, but a w- about a week before uh, I left, they had put a new engine in it, and they had were testing it out, and it swung a rod in the engine, so that car was out. And so she helped me find another car to drive, and she had to scramble to find a car to drive, and so I ended up driving uh, Tim White car from South Carolina, and it is a highly, highly modified 2,000-year model Subaru Impreza, basically a WRX STI, which is, I drive a 2017 Subaru WRX STI at my local events that that I've been driving lately, so I'm I'm familiar with the later version of that car, but this is a this was a different car. It was a, a lot more horsepower. Uh, it was a lot, you know, very highly modified street or uh, racing suspension, and of course, and, and that he also had the huger tire contingency program that he participated in. So he was running huger tires, and they're considered huger tires are considered the best in the race industry, the definitely the best for autocross. And they're very expensive, so if if people are racing a lot, you know, it it helps them to do the contingency program to get either free tires or, you know, to save money on the cost of the tires. 
extraordinarily expensive for the for the racing tires though on that. But well, um so one that thing that the, I found the car and the driving. One thing that I found very fascinating is before the race even started, you went to school. Uh, tell us, tell us a little bit about that. So that was the Evo School, EVO instructed classes, and they hold the EV, Evo schools all over America. Um, that was the first chance I had to do that, and so I, I jumped on the opportunity. I have not done any actual professional training on racing as of yet, so that was my first time to get instructed professionally. I have had people who have had a lot of experience, some who were instructors ride with me, but not in an official format. So so I get there. That was on Tuesday. I got there Monday night, and they, they have a kickoff party and everything Monday night, um, I didn't even make it to that because the South Carolina crew, they, they, they were, uh, they had a game set called four square. It was like, there was a lot of people there hanging out, getting to know everyone. Um, while even there before I did the Evo school that, that first night, a guy came running up and we had to help him fix a bushing. He's, he's working on his car that night. Oh, dear. You know, and I'm holding the light and helping helping fix a, a bushing for his car. But anyway, so um, so I did the school the next day, and I, I get in the car, and they actually had the instructor drive, which was a lady named Shelly Moffer, who is very well known in autocross and tons of experience. So she actually drove the car twice to get an idea of what to tell me to do in the car. And then I got in it and drove, and uh, she was absolutely amazing. She even no- she even noticed that I probably had horse racing experience, and I was like, yeah, you know, I grew up barrel racing and and showing gated horses too. And she was like, you you can tell because you have a natural ability to know the apex points, the pivot points on the car, and the flow. Of, of how you run a line to race. And, um, and that was really neat. So she was really amazing and she had great tips to, to race the car. And like I've, I've never heard before. And as it turned out, she builds race engines and does fabrication for race cars. And, and she's, she's amazing. And that's what she does for a living. So, uh, it was, it was awesome to meet her and have her ins- instruct me. We are talking about Allison's racing experience, but we're also taking your vehicle repair questions. Our email address for questions is auto at mpbonline.org. Allison, tell us, what was there one thing that she, a pointer that one of the instructors at the driving school gave you that did help you, you felt help you, uh, racing that you could carry forward in autocross? Oh, yes, dramatically. And it was Shelly that said it. She said, drive like it's where it's been raining and it's wet. Drive like it's a wet course, which means you have to be a little more careful about where you apply throttle and where you apply the brakes because that car had so much power, basically. So if I was coming out of a corner and I applied it too quickly or too too much throttle, I was going to lose the car. It was going to lose traction, which I did. Uh, you know, kind of would go sideways and, and lose traction, which I wasn't used to because all the cars pretty much that I've driven pretty, pretty much were uh, – it was it, it was there a little harder to get to to lose traction. This one you could you could barely tap the throttle and with so much power. Even though it's an all wheel drive car on users, it's it's still like distraction. It was almost five hundred horsepower. It was a very powerful car. So that was that was a great tip to to treat it that way. And you know, of course I increased my time the next time dramatically when I when I drove it that way. If you've got a question, send us your emails to auto at mpbonline.org. I could listen all day to hear about Allison's racing over this past weekend, but we are here to take your vehicle repair questions or your autocross questions for Allison. 
Is your car under recall? I've got a list of ones that are. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Join us each week for Everyday Tech on MPB Think Radio. We have an IT expert, a computer repair ace, and we troubleshoot your problems on the phones as well. Everyday Tech, Wednesdays at 10 on MPB Think Radio. Download the podcast now or listen on YouTube on the MPB Think Radio channel. Get your MPB car tag anytime. It doesn't even have to be up for renewal. Simply go to your county office to sign up. When you get an MPB car tag, a portion of the fee helps MPB continue to educate, inform, and entertain Mississippians. For details, visit mpbonline.org slash car tag. We'll see you on the road. You're listening to AutoCorrect with Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic. I'm Liz Gill. If you want even more AutoCorrect, we hope you'll find our podcast on all podcasting for- platforms for your smart device. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturdays at 11. The recalls this week, we've got the 2018 through 21 models for Toyota Tundras. They're recalls for a headlight fire risk. Remember, those dealers will modify and inspect and, if necessary, replace your problem if there's a recall. You can find out if your specific car has a past recall by going to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website. That's nhtsa.gov slash recall. You just put in your VIN or you could find their Safer Car app. We're talking about autocross racing today with Allison, but that's just between your vehicle repair questions. Our email address is auto at mpbonline.org. We've got Catherine in Mobile on the line. Catherine, thanks for calling into AutoCorrect today. What's your comment or question? Uh, it's going to be about extended warranties on a car. <clears throat> I want to get the, her opinion. Allison, what do you think? You know, with, worked at a Toyota dealership. Uh, people would have an extended warranty to to cover a repair. It was used, and it did seem to come in handy. I would probably, whatever company it is, with the extended warranty that you're looking at getting it from, Google it and, and check some reviews on it. Maybe check the Better Business Bureau. Make sure they're a good, legit company. Uh, so that's that's really my, my only experience with it. Even at our shop, we deal with extended warranty companies and, you know, and cover repairs for, for people and, and, you know, deal with their warranty companies to have it covered. And... Um, so it seems to me that it's a, a good value. Uh, but like I said, just just make sure the company that you get it with is is well reviewed and has has good reviews and um, and understand also like the things that are warranty that they will warranty and the things that they won't warranty. Be aware of what that is. For instance, we had a a lady come in to Toyota when I worked there that had her car had overheated. And when she brought in, it turned out that a, um, or or either it affected her overheated or her AC. But either way, it had hit the, it was a bird that had hit the front of the car and messed up. I, I guess her condenser or radiator. I, I don't remember. But the warranty company did not cover that because it was not a manufacturer defect. To give to give you a for instance of how it works. So so do a little more work on that. But but overall, it does seem like a good value, even for a car as reliable as a Toyota. We did we did have situations where we used them. 
Well, uh, I, my, somehow you, when I couldn't hear you at first, and you were talking about Toyota. Mine is a Buick uh, Enclave that's getting close to 50,000 miles. So I was just really asking about the Buick. But I guess your comments will go for, for any car dealership or any car. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Catherine. We appreciate you calling in. Next, we're going to go to Alabama. Stay in Alabama and talk with James. James, thanks for calling yeah. in to AutoCorrect today. What's your comment or question? I had a question. I got a uh, Ford F-250 08 model, and it keeps losing power as you're going down the road. It just loses power, but it doesn't shut off. And then you stop, turn it off, restart it, and you can go for a couple more minutes. But the first initial start, you can drive it for about 20 minutes. And then it shuts off. It doesn't shut off. It just loses power. And then you stop and restart it again. You can drive a couple more minutes. I was just wanting to know whether that could be. Um, I, I think I've heard of this problem quite a few times on on some Ford trucks, and it was the throttle body was acted up, and that's what it was doing. It would lose power. It would make people think it was their transmission that was going out, um, but but it turned out it was the, the throttle body had messed up, the, the actual throttle body itself. But um, but that is something that, you know, you want uh, to have checked out. So I, I wouldn't be able to know for sure that's what's going on. But um, and, and it takes putting it on a scanner and reading the data – you know, when it happens or just after it happens and seeing what's going on. That's how they diagnose it. But that, from what I understand, that's a common problem, and that, that may be what's going on. It, I've just heard of it a lot, and I've, I've known people personally that had it happen to them on their Ford trucks around that year, and that's exactly what was happening, that, uh, the same thing. They were losing power on the interstate, and they pull over and turn off the car, and then get back up and it would go for a while and then it would do it again. But they they always thought it was the transmission acting up. But it's it, no, it's a thought of body. So if I hope that helps. It helps you know you figure it out. And um let us know what what ended up being the, the fix. All righty, thank you. Thank you, James. Between your vehicle repair questions, we are talking about Allison's trip to the 2021 Tire Rack SCCA Solo Solo Nationals at uh, Lincoln Air Park, the autocross uh, national competition. Allison, one thing I found interesting but perplexing, why did they have separate racing divisions for ladies and men? <laughs> that that actually, actually gets brought up a lot, um, and while I was at the Nationals, it got brought up a lot because, well, some women actually were mad about that. It felt like that was um, sexist, I guess. At the, that Nationals last week were upset. And um, the, the thing is, is that they didn't have a ladies class for, for years. And they, the participation for ladies was extremely low. And when women would come in, they... Um, they would complain about feeling uh, intimidated, uh, uh, racing against men. So they created a ladies class specifically because of this reason and to increase participation of women in racing in SECA. And it did. It worked. It, it, incre- it increased uh, it a lot. And it's just a, um, women are tend to naturally not be as aggressive drivers, and they just felt like, that you know they they want to participate against each other and not participate against men. Now some women took that offensively and did not like that, and that's still an ongoing thing. And you can choose not to run in ladies' class. You do not have to run in ladies' class. You can run against the men, um, which I do sometimes. I do run against the men sometimes. Sometimes I do ladies. Uh, most of the time I run against the men in the local autocross. Um, on the national event. By the time you're there, the ladies are so amazing. So many years of experience, just such intense drivers. You know, I just I'll run in the ladies' class until I get good enough to beat them, and then I'll I'll go over to the men's and see what how I fare there. 
uh, Shelly Moffert, my instructor, was in the men's. She ran with the men, for instance. That's interesting. So, you know, maybe it, uh, using it as a draw to get people to uh, participate. We've got another phone call. Let's go to Rose in Jackson. Rose, thanks for calling into AutoCorrect today. What's your comment or question for Allison? Hello, I'm from Jackson. I have a F-150 2011 4x4 truck. I took it to the dealership, and I guess they put it on the machine, and it came back that it didn't show them any code saying there is anything wrong. However, every time I would start the engine uh, and I would run it that day, but the next morning when I get up to go to work or what have you, it would uh, just, it wouldn't start. So I thought maybe it may be the battery. So I called Triple A out to have them to look at it and everything because I did buy a battery from them and I have like a three year warranty. However, uh, they went ahead and installed a new battery, and it did the same thing. Long, okay, fast forward back to the dealership. I um, got there. They told me that my vehicle was ready, and I went there. They said they're not going to charge me anything because they didn't see anything wrong. The technician had to jump start my vehicle. I said, <laughs> well, apparently they're wrong. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> hilarious to me, Rose. I'm sorry. Keep <laughs> keep telling your story. I ever, uh, I was like, no, something is wrong. And so my advisor comes out, and she said, yes, something definitely wrong. So they try to figure out the problem now. And I just said, uh, a friend of mine told me about autocorrect. So I said, let me call them and just ask them. If it's not a mechanical problem, could it be like electrical or uh, what they call the motherboard or the circuit. I don't know. Wiring. Allison, what are some things it could be? Yeah, thank, thank your friend for referring us to you. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, it, just de- it definitely sounds like an electrical thing and not mechanical. Uh, and the fact that they jumped it off and it ran says that it is something to do with that system. <laughs> So yeah. why they're not finding that, I'm not really sure. Um, sometimes electrical diagnostics can be over the heads of your average tech at a dealership. So uh-huh. that is something we do at our shop. So if you want to contact us or the automotive group in, in Jackson, or, you know, you can you can contact me directly. Um, okay, that number is? What's, what's that? What's the number? For the automotive group. My number is 601-502-3157, and you can uh, text his best, of course, and, um, mm-hmm. and you know, so that that's a, a way to, to get an appointment with us. Um, so we, the thing is, it just, it might need to come to the shop, and then in the morning when it's not cranking, we're, you know, try to crank it and then test it right then and there and see what's going on. And, um, you know, and then something like like this, for listeners out there, this may be a situation where you would want an automotive electrical shop. Our shop is an independent shop, and we do electrical diagnostics, too. Um, and so so it's really, it's, uh, it's probably something very simple, it sounds like. And I'm, I'm kind of actually surprised, too, that they didn't find it at the dealership. But, um, right. Yeah, we, we can help you figure out this problem. Thank you so much. So they asked for a review. <laughs> I know they didn't ask me that, but they did. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that a... review is actually a big part of the dealership process. We had every interaction we had with the customer, we had a review. It was a, you know, I wish I could talk more about that on air, but it was a very manipulated system and quite an interesting thing that I had to to deal with there. But, um, yeah, they asked for a review because it's such a big deal. They're scared to death you're going to leave a bad review. Yeah, they're disappointed today because that review was so great. Thanks, Rose. We appreciate you calling in. So, Allison, for folks who live uh, around the state or around the country, what's a good way to find a a company or a, a a mechanic who can diagnose intermittent electrical problems. 
I'll tell you what I did when I had a cousin of mine in Arkansas that was having a problem, and uh, I, you know, I, I wanted to find her a shop. She had an idea of a couple of shops. Well, I I went to her town, her area on Google and and Googled auto shops and and uh, specifically looking at independently owned shops. And I looked at their Google reviews. How many did they have? How many good ones did they have? And then I called them and gave them an idea of what was going on with the car to get a feel for, are they going to listen to me as a woman? Did did make a difference to me on how they responded uh, and, you know, and found her someone good. So... Yeah, that that is a big thing to me nowadays, and it's a great tool for us to use. Is if they have good Google reviews, and then of course you know check anything else you can. If they have a Facebook page, uh, um, we have a Facebook page called the Automotive Group on Facebook. That's uh, something we interact with. Most businesses these days have have that, and or check their website. Uh, you know, check their social media and see you know, who these, who these people are. And like I said, give them a call and tell them your problem. And if they don't answer the phone politely, they don't seem open and, and, li- and welcoming and listening to your question and answering your questions, then they're probably, they, they're probably not going to do a good job or be very communicative with you about your problem, especially if you have a weird problem that's not, that takes maybe a little more effort to fix. Our email address where you can send questions is auto at mpbonline.org. We're learning about autocross, but that's just between your repair questions. What's in the news? I'll tell you next. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. The information presented on this program is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information presented does not create any type of relationship between the hosts and guests and the listening audience. Please consult an appropriate professional for guidance about your concerns. The contractor ever tell you the price of something and it sounds so high you think, eh, maybe I'll try it myself. Some jobs just aren't that difficult, and yes, you can do it. If you want to find out how to do those things, listen to Fix It 101, podcast everywhere. Hi, it's Rachel Martin with NPR's Morning Edition. People have stories about their car, that long summertime family road trip, that hand-me-down first car they got when they turned 16, the first car they bought on their own. And cars can generate other kinds of stories, like the kind you hear on this station. When you donate a vehicle to this station, the proceeds bring you stories from around the world. Here's how to get started. Donate your car, motorcycle, boat, or RV by going to mpbonline.org. Thank you for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic, is our expert. I'm Liz Gill. We hope you've downloaded our app for your smartphone. It's the MPB Public Media app. In addition to listening to our show on the MPB Public Media app, you can click on the support button and make a contribution. Contributions help keep our programs on the air for you and for others to enjoy. Thank you so much for your contributions to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Autocorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m., with a replay Saturdays at 11. In the news, we discussed uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe, that Algeria used up the last of its stockpile of leaded gasoline in July. That was according to the UN Environment Program, which has spent 19 years trying to eliminate leaded gasoline around the globe, but there's still leaded fuel around small aircraft use it. So if you need leaded fuel, go to the airport. We are talking about autocross, but that's just between your vehicle repair questions. We hope that you'll email your questions to us, auto at mpbonline.org. We're going to go to Clay, who is calling from Arkansas. Thanks for calling in Uh, today, Clay. What's your comment or question? Yes, ma'am. I have a 2013 uh, Duramax 
or a GMC, and my high beams have gone out. And I was told that there's a module, a high beam module, on the bottom of the fuse box itself that you had to replace the whole fuse box. You cannot just buy the, the module. It's got low beam modules on the top, but it does not have any on the bottom. I mean, it does not. All my fuses and all my modules are good on, the, on you know, the low beams and all that. It's just I can't get it. To, I've changed out the, the handle, the dimmer switch itself, and put new bulbs in it and all that, and I still can't can't get it. And I was just wondering if, if she knew anything about a high beam module on the, if I had to replace the whole fuse box or not. I've not heard of having to replace the whole fuse box, but I am familiar with um, the headlights these days on these newer cars, the um, HIDs, high uh, uh, high density light bulbs, they have a a ballast, a separate unit that's known to, it goes out on on different cars. Um, I've replaced it on a few BMWs I know and maybe some other cars I can't remember. But it's like it is a separate unit, and it's separate for your high beam and your low beam. And um, so that module is um, what what powers these. these, uh, Those are the super bright lights that you see, basically. And yet, so the light bulbs themselves don't go out, but the little ballast or the control module goes out. I am not uh, familiar with exactly what's going on with your truck. What I would do is Google it, uh, get on some forums maybe so that you can get a little information about how that how that system works. And uh, But I'm not exactly familiar with what they're saying, what they're talking about with the replacing the whole fuse box. That sounds uh, – that, that doesn't sound right to me. Uh, like you you sound like you. that sounds a little far-fetched for you too. Um, well, that's, that's, uh, that's actually, actually what I want to look into. Yes, ma'am. That's actually where I found found out that uh, the the module for the high beams was built onto the bottom of the of the, the fuse box itself under the hood, and you have to, you know, it's, I mean, you can take it out. It's a quick it's a quick fix, but it's an expensive fix if that's what's wrong with it. Uh, so I mean, I, I googled that. That's how I found that, and I didn't find nothing about no uh, baluster or anything like that. But I mean, I can go back and go to it. That's no problem. Okay. Um, yeah, well, and, and it being a 2013, I would assume the dealership would know this is a, as a common problem. How much are they saying that it costs to fix it? Uh, around two hundred dollars for the for the uh, for the fuse box itself. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I would look into it some more and and see if you can get some opinions on it. Uh, for something like that, also, this is a, when you have a car problem, it's just like going to the doctor. You can get a second opinion somewhere else, and I do usually recommend it, especially if it's something kind of weird like this or, it, um, or you know, expensive. You know, $200, honestly, is not very expensive, but I, I guess you're talking about the labor or something else is also high. Um for a car repair, and for two hundred dollars to fix your high beams does sound very expensive compared to what it used to be, which was right. you well, know. I understand that. Well, I mean, that's just, that's just a few. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's just buying the fuse box. You know, the fuse box it's the panel itself, and you know, and just taking my, all my fuses and modules out and putting in it. But I mean, that's that's what it said that when. When it started going out, you could hit your high beams, and your high beams would come on, and they would they would go fine. And then the next time you hit your lows and come back to your highs, it may work, and then it may not. And eventually, it just completely went out. Okay. Uh, it did it over like a two-week period of time. Oh, okay. Fairly quickly, then. Um, yeah, that's something that I'd have to look into more to know. I am not familiar with that system. On, on that vehicle specifically. But, yes, they do have separate modules that that power the those bright lights that you see these days on these newer cars, the LEDs and the HIDs, I want to say. Well, Clay, we hope that Allison has uh, helped steer you in the right direction. It seemed like you were on the right track with going to those forums 
Allison, what all, where can someone find a forum for their vehicle? Um, so you just basically just Google your specific vehicle. Um, for him, it would be the generation of that, you know, 2013, whatever generation that Silverado or uh, 1500 is, GMC, you know, Duramax. And for that truck, there's going to be a lot of forms. You want to, you just want to find one that's active and and uh, has good moderators and, you know, that's easy to sign up for, easy to 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 navigate the form itself. With a vehicle like that, it's going to be a ton of them. For your vehicles who are, are that didn't sell as many or are lesser known, um, usually there's only like a one form, and you know, hopefully it's an active one. And that you, you when you have a question, you, you sign up and you get a little username and everything, and then you can participate on the form. You can generally look at any form, but to get sometimes to get more information, you have to go ahead. And and sign up. It's just it's a really quick process. It's not they're 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 not keeping any information. It's not like a big deal. It's usually just making a username and having an email address. All and right. That's it. Well, we've got a bunch more calls. Let's go to Bill in Picayune. Bill, thanks for calling into AutoCorrect today. What's your comment or question? Yeah, I was talking. Uh, I had that same problem that lady had with the Ford F one fifty, not being able to start it, and sometimes it starts. Ooh, do tell. Um, what happens is there's a, it's not a recall, but there's a technical bulletin to change out a fuse in the fuse block. You got to relocate it, and they sell a kit. It, the little mini fuse that's in there has a tendency to burn out and cause a short, and then your car won't start. If you let it sit for a while, Sometimes there's enough fuse left that makes contact and it'll start. I changed out the fuse and uh, relocated it, and everything's been fine. Ford didn't change the wiring until 2015. Okay, yeah, that sounds like, you know, something that, uh, that you know, I've, I've, you hear with different things with cars that'll have fixes that that the manufacturer didn't really address but like you said they'll have a technical service bulletin it's called a tsb and it'll be a known problem but they i think by law they have to have quite a few complaints before they make those tsbs into recalls but that's the process they are tsbs first and then they become recalls so that's not enough of a problem that they've had to actually make a recall on it. But that is good that there's a fix. So um, uh, thanks for that tip. Yep. if she does come to me, then I'll, I'll know that. There's a good chance that my coworkers know that. They're more familiar with uh, – they, they just have more experience in general with, like, American car manufacturers, domestic car manufacturers, and, and, uh, and yep. they uh, – it's specifically Ford products, um, so that you know that may be something they're already familiar with. But yeah, so uh, to find the TSBs, we ha- we use Identifix as our labor software. So when we have a problem, we can go to that specific vehicle and look through the TSB list and find a no start situations like that, and then and probably find what you're talking about. It's a resource out there for automotive technicians. Bill, thank you so yeah. much for calling in. Rose, I hope you heard that. Uh, you know, you just need to find a, a company to, to repair your car that reads the technical uh, the technical bulletins. You can always send us an email with your questions, auto at mpbonline.org. We're taking your repair questions And we've got a new car review from Casey Williams coming up. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio.
Here's a new car review from Casey Williams. It's Auto Casey on AutoCorrect. Buick offers a full range of crossovers from the subcompact Encore to the large three row crossover, the Enclave. And right in the middle is the vehicle we have here, the 2021 Buick Envision Essence Edition. From the outside, it's a lot more aggressive looking than the previous generation. Wide hood, much wider stance, looks a lot sportier. I like the white grille and the LED headlamps, and I really like the 20 inch black alloy wheels. Inside, all the luxury features you'd expect in a Cadillac. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, navigation, Bose audio, a heads-up display, and all the crash avoidance systems. Under the hood, you get a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, delivers 252 horsepower, and pretty decent gas mileage at 24 miles per gallon in the city, 31 on the highway. Best of all for this vehicle might be its price. It starts under $32,000. This one fully equipped, $41,315. See the full video on his YouTube channel, Auto Casey, and listen to AutoCorrect on the MPB Think Radio YouTube channel. On Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, you get information about foods you should eat to stay in good health and tips on how to stay active. I'm Dr. Josie Bidwell, host of Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit and Associate Professor of Preventive Medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Listen to the show every Monday at 11 or subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy with your preferred podcasting app. This podcast is a local production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting and depends on the support of listeners like you. If you can, please donate today at mpbonline.org. And thanks. This is AutoCorrect. If you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show on our website, autocorrect.mpbonline.org. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturdays at 11. I'm Liz Gill, but our expert is the lady auto mechanic, Allison Walker, ASE certified. Allison, we've got two phone calls left. Let's go to Stephen in Ocean Springs. Stephen, thanks for calling in to AutoCorrect today. What's your comment or question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to uh, let you guys know that I love the show. Uh, it, it's the best auto show since the Click and Clack Brothers, the show. Um, I do have a question. I have a 2014 Nissan Altima SV with 200,614 miles. And I'm wondering what inspections and uh, tune-up work needs to be done on this thing. Specifically, uh, does somebody need to break into the transmission? I've had a mechanic uh, quote me for about 200 bucks, but basically just changing spark plugs. So I was just wondering uh, what, you, what you guys thought about that. Um, well, what I recommend is going to your owner's manual and looking and seeing what is recommended but, um, yeah, if you, right. you want to know when your coolant fluid, all your fluids are, need to be done, and uh, you just make sure everything is refreshed and where it's supposed to be at that mileage. And so, there's so generally, on the owner's manual, the maintenance, they'll go up to like 120000 and then you just keep right. flipping that over from from there. Or, you know, give or take a hundred. And twenty thousand miles, so, it'll. You know, so so far, I haven't had anybody talk about um, whether or not they should, or whether they even understand whether they should uh, break into the transmission or just do a flush. And no one's talked about inspections as far as like tie rods. Uh, I'm just worried. I, I just want to keep the thing running. It, it's running well, but it does sputter a bit and has some acceleration issues from time to time. Okay. Um, well, the, those car that they, they were under recall for transmission problems. Uh, the CBT transmissions and the Nissans are well known to have problems. Uh, CBTs and sure. a few car manufacturers have have problems. So it's not really just Nissan. It's just that they had the some of the most problems with the specific company that they used. Um, I think they're about to go to a different company for their CBT transmissions. The same okay. one that um, Toyota uses, I believe. But anyway, so um, so that may be what's going on. And then, but you 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 don't need like maintenance. You need to figure out what the problem is. And 
and go from there. Do you, yeah, so I'm guessing you don't have a check engine light on. Is that right? Uh, n- no, no, no check engine light. Everything seems to be running fine. We've, we've kept the maintenance on it, but like I said, it's starting to have the little sputter. There's been times where, uh, you know, maybe you're trying to cross uh, a median, you know, into traffic, and, and the ex- you know, you press the accelerator, and you're not really getting anything out of it. And then for, you know, a long time, you know, you don't have any problem at all. And I'm just wondering what question I should ask my mechanic to inspect the car wholly and to understand what is going wrong. And then that way I can uh, bounce it off the owner's manual and, and, and kind of make some educated decisions myself on what maintenance needs to be done. So basically, what what question a, would I ask? <laughs> right. Um, so basically, the same thing you're asking me. But the thing is, you need to uh, specify what the car is doing first. That's the first thing that you want to say. This is what sure. the car is doing. You feel comfortable diagnosing this. They should, in my opinion, say the same things I just said. Those that have known CVT transmission problems, it does sound like that's what's going on. Let's look at it. Um, so basically, well, then I, I have I have only one follow up. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, that uh, the transmission codes that they need to sure. look at, they won't specifically set off a check engine light, but you go right. into the OBD2 reader just like you do to check in a check engine to check a check engine light, and go in okay. there and look at the transmission, and they'll and it'll tell what's going on and what codes uh, are set. So there oh. are probably code set and that more than likely that's what's going on with the car but um with it with it actually sputtering that i'm not sure if that's you're saying and i mean mine, I, very, 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 minor, minor. very minor you you can almost you can just barely detect it well, when did you change your spark plugs last uh well Exactly. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, la- the, the, la- the last time I flossed my or... teeth, the, do- the, den- the dentist was there, right? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's something to just keep in mind to, you know, because a car I didn't will be gross, a little bit when we need spark plugs. But usually okay. you get a misfire and a check engine so light or something like that. So Stephen, I hope that Allison was able to uh, steer you in the right direction with the, checking your owner's manual, but we have just run out of time. Uh, Warren from Greenville, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to your call. Please send us an email. Our address is auto at mpbonline.org. Allison, we have 30 seconds. I just want to uh, finish off your autocross you didn't do as well as you had hoped, but do you think you will go back again, or uh, are you energized for when Mississippi starts autocross? Well, I actually ended up doing, like, a lot better than I thought. It's just that first day we ended up having car problems, and I got really upset, and I did make a, a, a Facebook post on that. I just wanted to be honest about my experience. But I actually cried after my first run because I did – my expectations were so high – and I'm so used to doing good. Um, but it got, uh, it was a dramatically different experience the next day when we fixed the car. And if my first day had been better, I actually, I would have probably placed a lot higher than I did. I still didn't come in last, but the competition was very tough. Those, those people had say the ladies had a lot of experience. That was way more experience than I had. Well, I'm uh, excited for you, up. and we, we look forward to following your racing career. That wraps us up for today's AutoCorrect. Thanks, Jay White and Michelle McAdoo. Thanks, Allison Walker, who volunteers. And you can follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as the Lady Auto Mechanic. I'm Liz Gill. Thanks for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio.